Let's pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this privilege we have to come and worship you. Lord, as I speak about the Samaritan woman, like her, you fill us up. You teach us a lesson that you want us to learn so that we may glorify you and be drawn more closer to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The woman at the well. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired of his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming to draw water. If I could choose one story from the gospel to have with me all the time, it is this story of the woman at the well. The story has many themes, and yet the center of the story can be stated in one word. The word is inclusion. Out of all the stories of Jesus meeting people, this one, represents the meaning of inclusion the most accurately for our purposes. To comprehend the depth of the story, we have to know some of the details about relationships in Samaria in Jesus' day. The first relationship is one between Samaria and Jerusalem. The Samaritans and the Jewish people had a very strong dislike for one another. They had a huge argument over religion centuries earlier. The Samaritan built a church for worship in their own area. They believed God was everywhere, and therefore, they could worship God in Samaria without traveling to Jerusalem. The Jewish people, on the other hand, particularly the leaders, believed true worship could only take place at the temple in Jerusalem. The temple in Samaria was removed forcibly. As a result, the Samaritans were considered lower class people than the Jews due to their religious belief. Another custom of the day concerned relationship between men and women. A Jewish man was not to talk to women strange to them on the streets. It was just not done. If a man did talk to a woman he did not know, it was assumed the man might, the woman might be a prostitute, or it was also assumed that the man was trying to start a relationship with a woman even though she may be married. Either way, the relationship was wrong. So a Jewish man never talked to a woman on the street. Now Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman Two rules are already broken, and yet there are more rules to be broken. A rabbi did not talk to women. The rabbis, they taught male students. Furthermore, this woman was a sinner. She was coming to the well in the middle of the day. 
Nobody came to the well at noontime because it was very hot. This woman came to the well because she wanted to avoid other women of the town. Now, why did she want to avoid women of the town? Either because she was a prostitute or possibly because she had a horrible married life. The prostitution possibly is easy to understand. The other women in the town had no respect for prostitutes. Let's say she was actually married five times. And in fact, she was living with a man, now outside of matrimony. Either way, she was not very popular with at least a sizable portion of the community. Yet, as this woman approaches the well, Jesus breaks every societal rule by beginning a conversation. In the course of the conversation, Jesus offers her eternal life. She does not understand what he is offering, but he is offering her the Holy Spirit. He is offering her living water. If she receives this water, she will never thirst again. Jesus is offering her the opportunity to receive the Holy Spirit and be received into the kingdom of God. However, she does not quite understand. She first believes he is talking about water, regular water. She does not understand how he is going to draw water out of the well without any implements to help him. He then gets her attention. He asks her about her personal life. He asks her about her husband. She admits that she has no husband. Jesus confronts her about her five past husbands, and then he tells her she is currently living with another man. Jesus tells her all about her past, and yet he does not condemn her. He doesn't agree with it, but yet... He does not condemn her. The woman must have been shocked. And yes, she was shocked. She knows that everything that Jesus was saying was the truth. She also knows that Jesus does not condemn her. Because he does not condemn her, she runs to her town, gathers all the people, and gives them a testimony. They invite Jesus to stay with them, and the town comes to believe in Jesus. In the Christian church, we say that we believe in inclusion. Yet, do we mirror what Jesus did here? Some people, some individual churches claim to be inclusive, yet they only include people that are like the members already in the pews. Everyone looks the same, talks the same, and acts the same. That type of inclusion is a false inclusion. It is actually exclusion under the guise of the label inclusivity. True inclusion is following the principles of this story. It is following the principles of our baptismal covenant. We promise in the covenant to respect the dignity of every human being. We also state that we believe in Jesus Christ. We state that we repent and return to the Lord. We proclaim we will turn away from sin and evil of the world. Here we see acceptance and accountability. We see re repentance and redemption. We see the recognition of our sinful behavior and the attempt to actually do something about it. Yes, we know we cannot be perfect. Yes, we know we are going to fall short and sin again. The point is we try to live out our faith. Furthermore, we invite others to join in on the journey. If we are honest, they do not have to be perfect first. They just have to be willing to try like everybody else. 
we all have to recognize we are sinful children of a loving God who comes to us and offers us living water. We are offered an eternal spring of living water to enrich our lives with God and with one another. Jesus accepted the woman even though she was a Samaritan whose racial heritage was mixed and whose religion was in need of correction. That's the first point. Secondly, Jesus accepted her even though she led a sinful, immoral life. This woman was living with a man outside of marriage. She was shacking up with a guy, and she had five marriages before that, all of which apparently had failed. So this woman had a load of sin and guilt as she stood there before God. She knew it, and Jesus knew it too. Yet, Jesus accepted her. You see, Jesus not only accepted the Samaritan woman who did something, but he did something much more. He would even die for her. This same Jesus would go to Calvary's holy mountain, where he would make the atoning sacrifice for her sins. Not only her sins, yours, mine, and the sins of the whole world. The scripture says, for while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Again, the scripture says, God shows his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for us sinners. That's why he can forgive. This man, Jesus, gave the Samaritan woman the gift of God, acceptance, forgiveness for her sins, living water, eternal life. The gift he gave was so great that it changed her life. It was so exciting that she left her water jar there at the well and went back to the town and started telling others about what had happened. Her testimony then led others to believe, to receive the same gift of God. So it is for us. You and I have received such a wonderful and inexhaustible gift from God that we want to tell others about it and share it with them too. There's plenty of living water to go around. Today, we have one of the greatest stories before us. Jesus met the woman at the well and she was changed. She was changed so much that she took the message to her own town and they were changed too. True inclusion brings change in everybody. It is not possible to stand before Christ and not be changed. We can deny him and walk away, or we can accept him and drink deeply from the water he offers. Either way, we are changed. We are not perfect in either case. We are simply changed. Will we drink of the water Jesus offers, or will we walk away? Jesus calmly waits for your reply.